Great. So we're looking at, um, before we dive into details, before we dive into details of healthy church model, and, and we will, and we're going to really dig deeply uh, in, into some very robust models of how to think about church, but, but first we've got to lift up our vision. You know, my purpose here is, is not to try to give a, uh, a local church pastor some new strategies to get more people coming to church on Sunday. Or it's a new small group strategy to try to increase the outreach of the church. Or, you know, and, and nothing's wrong with any of that. But, but, but we have to start at the highest, at the biggest, at the, at, at the most eternal vision of God and purpose. And let that guide and form and dictate everything else. Amen. So let's compare what has been our perspective of the church with Jesus' eternal perspective. This is uh, your next team assignment, please. And this is on page 21. Let's think about the current reality of the church in your nation, in your own context, in your nation. The current reality, let's face reality, the first task of the leader, face reality. When you think of the church in your current context and uh, nation, what are the words that come to mind? In your teams, just make a list of words. What are the words that come to mind? Let's do that now, please. We'll give you three minutes. What's the current reality of the church? All right, let's come together, please. Hey. Body of Christ. Let's come together. What? Body of Christ. The current reality. The current reality? Yeah. Some of them are God, some of them are God, some of them are connected. Good. Good. Corruption. That was Ehab's first word. Your first word was corruption. All right, corruption. Like brotherhood. Yeah. All right, what's the current reality of the church in your nation? Buildings. Buildings. Buildings focus on buildings, focus on money. Positions. Buildings, money. Positions. Focus on position. Business Building, opportunities. position, money, business opportunities. Wow. Well, entertainment. Entertainment. Activities and program. <laughs> yeah. Airport to heaven. Exploitation. Oh dear. Competition. 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 How many? How many would say competition is a mark of yeah. churches in, 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 in your nation? Oh, wow. Status. Yeah. Status. Yeah. Territorialism. Yeah. A what? Social club. It's a social club. Oh, my goodness. Religion, conflicts, division. Oh, dear. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's all negative. Of course, there are positive things going as well. But, but I think we're, we're, we're popping up the reality that, that we face a lot of struggles, don't we, in, in, in the churches, in our nations. Um, let's let. Uh, sorry, what? Loud music. Loud music. <laughs> Bro, you're in Africa. It's, it's always going to be loud music. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Performance, music performance. Yeah, it's a show. It's a performance. Yeah, well. Welfare center. Welfare ah. center. Fan club. The, for the leader. Yeah, it's the leader's own fan club. Oh, oh dear. Deliverance. Yes. Deliverance. So, yeah, some, 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 yeah, some good things. So deliverance, love, care, body of Christ. Yeah, reaching the lost fellowship. Yeah, there are good things. It's not all negative. I mean, let's not, you know, jump off the bridge after doing this exercise. <laughs> Family. Good. Uh, sorry, bro. Poli uh, politics. Yeah, politics. Yeah. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. All right. <laughs> or we're all going to be jumping off the bridge in a moment. 
All right, but now let's think about Jesus' perspective, his vision, yeah? His vision for the church, what he sees, because he says, I will build my church. And he's not overcome by our nonsense. No. Right. He's not overcome by our weakness, by our, you know, uh, pride and competition and, and carnality. Yeah, right. he's not. He says, I will build my church. So when he looks at the church, of, of course, he, he understands all of, of course, he sees all, he sees the reality, of course. But, but what does he really see? Yes. What's his vision? Where does he see it going? What, what's the opportunity, the potential? What's he building? Yeah. Next team assignment. We'll give you one minute in your teams yes. to define Jesus' vision, his perspective. Just list words. What are the words? All right, let's hear your, let's hear your work, please. What's Jesus' perspective on his church? Please, what are the words you've got? Call them out. Life. Beauty. Light. Amen. Love. One body. Three L's. Three, L's. three L's. Three L's. It's a three L model. Thank you. So creative. So creative. It's, 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 it's. Salt and light. Good. Yeah. Impact. Yeah. Transformation. Good. Body. A body. A body. Good. Temple. Good. Temple. Unity. Authority. Healthy authority. Yeah. Victorious, glorious, wow. Sorry? Pure. Purity, good. Yeah, beautiful. Wow, glorious, beautiful bride of Christ. That's what he sees, isn't it? Now, of course he sees all the other stuff too, the current reality. In fact, in fact, look, if you, if you see problems with the church, Imagine what he sees, because he goes deeply into all of our motives, and oh my goodness, it, you you would you would uh, it, you 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 think Jesus would be justified if he was overwhelmed, you know, if he just gave up, yeah? This is just so bad, I can't you know why even bother anymore? Let's just give up, yeah? I mean, you you wouldn't blame him, would you? But yet he doesn't. And that's because this is what he sees. He sees the future. He sees the vision. He sees what he, what he is building. He sees the end from the beginning. Yeah? Wow. And so, so let's think about because... Thank you. You can sit down. Because of what he sees, how does that affect the way he deals with the church now? Please. He endures, doesn't he? He endures. He has compassion. He has mercy. He has patience. He is forgiving. He is persistent. Love. He loves us anyway because he sees the vision. What else? He's merciful toward us. He's thoughtful. Hopeful. Gracious. Compassionate. He believes in the future. He never gives up. Amen. He will never give up. All right. Now, what if we also see the church from his perspective. Wow. Do you see the impact that will have on us as leaders in the church to have the right perspective? <laughs> Go up into the stand and to look at it from God's viewpoint. Then we will have the grace to see the best, think the best, hope the best. We will have the grace to endure, to be patient, to be hopeful. Yeah? Wow. So let's everyone, let's please stand. Let's please stand. Because here's the reality, dear friends. We look at the current situation 
and we get tired. Don't we? We get discouraged. We complain. Sometimes we even get angry at the church. Yeah? We get upset. We become hopeless. Many leaders all over the world are in a very dark situation because all they're looking at is the current reality. They're not seeing the church from God's perspective. And so let's each of us now, let's, let's look at God. Let's bring our hearts, our attitudes, our practices to Him. Let's repent as necessary, where, where we recognize we've been impatient, we've been upset, we've been frustrated. Perhaps we've even been angry and negative toward people. And let's bring that to the cross now, yeah? And so let's each of us, let's look at God inwardly, allow Him to deal with our hearts and different ones, one by one. Let's please pray out. It might be repentance or a, or a commitment to God to see the church from His perspective with hope and endurance and patience. Let's wait on God and let's, let's pray together, please. Different ones, lead out, please, one by one. Lead us in prayer. <coughs> us redemptive heart to you, church, to love the church like you love her. Yeah. Amen. Father, help us emulate your, your patience. Amen. Yes, Lord, help us be patient. Help us, Lord, to be optimistic every time, Lord, that wow. to work towards your church. Father, that we would always have in mind that this is your church, Lord. Amen. Yes. Lord. yes. Lord, we are sinners. You died for us. Lord, we ask that we also nurture and sustain such heart towards your body not to be too judgmental about your church. Yes. But accommodating. Amen. We see, that, uh, we see the end from the beginning. Amen. Amen. Lord, you lighten the eyes of our understanding. Yes. That we may see it in your perspective. Yes. Amen. Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, help us to be really the light and the soul to this world of God. Lord, help us to reflect your character through our lives, O God. Let people see Jesus through our lives, not through our preaching, O oh God. Let them see Jesus through our lives. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yes. yes, amen. Life. Amen. Father, thank you for inviting us up in the stands to see yes. what you see. Amen. To open our hearts, oh God, to really see it. And Father, would you would you draw us up very frequently to see yes. what you see? To be yes, that. Lord, we need that. The, beauty, the beautiful bride of Amen. Yes. amen. Lord, when, especially when we're down in the field and we're, when we're down on the field and, and being discouraged and experiencing yeah. the pain and the, the difficulty, the offenses. Father, yes. remind us of what you see. Remind us. Draw us up. Draw us up. We invite you to draw us up. Amen. And remind us. Let's Amen. join with you in vision for what you yes, see. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Help us to see like you see. Help us, O oh God, to bear your burden. Amen. Yes. That we will be burdened by the things that burden you. Yes. Yes. I, I have a hard time seeing what you see. Mm. What I've seen in the church, it's just, I really don't see it. Mm. Mm. How you love the church, I, I can't imagine. Wow. Because all I've seen is twin trouble after another. Yeah. It's easy for me to be apathetic. It's easy for yep. me to be cynical. Mm. Yes, Lord. To want to give up. Yes, forgive us, Lord. I need your vision. Yes. Yes. 
I, I, I pray, Lord, that you help me to see the church the way it really is, not the way I've experienced it. Yes. Yes. Jesus. I pray, oh Lord Jesus, that that would be true not just for me, but for everyone. That's right. Yes, Lord. Who have been uh, polluted by the church. Amen. Uh, Amen. Who have experienced <coughs> shame yes, from the church. Amen. <coughs> we ask for oh, Jesus. Church would not be conformed to our image. Yes. Mm. Conformed to your image. Yes. yes. I pray that you start with me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Not yes. only we are becoming believers who will not believe anything because uh. we are tempted to give up because mm. of whatever we have seen around us. Yes. Mm. But Lord, because of your grace that you did not give up on us, Amen. give us one more chance that we will not give up on your church. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. You Jesus. never gave up on us. Amen. Your word says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Father God, help us to live according to the Spirit so that we can have the same mind with you. Amen. We see what things do. Yes. 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 Father, we ask for the spirit of Joshua and Caleb, those desired to see the mighty and all the issues. We ask that our response will be proper. We yes. respond as Jesus has been responding. Lord, Jesus. sometimes we are paralyzed by what we see. But Lord, grant us the heart to respond properly mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. Lord, we thank you that the bush is burning, but it's not being consumed in your church. But you have a great plan. We ask that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ concerning the church. Amen. 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 Father, I repent for misunderstanding and mistakes about the purpose you have for the church. Help me and help us to understand deeply what you mean about building your church. Yes. And be co workers with you. Yes. We don't want to be co workers who do, do, do not know the plan. Mm -hmm. Don't want to disturb your job and the cause distraction and mm -hmm. be frustrated at the at the end. You want to be part of it. Thank you for your light. Amen. 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 Father, help us to be patient. Give us your patience with the church. Yes. Lord. Yes. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Father, help us to be dependent on you yes. and to experience the true fellowship with you. Yes. Amen. Lord, it's your church and it's not ours. Yes. That's right. Help us, Lord, to see as you see the church. Yeah. Understand <coughs> as you understand the church. Mm. And help us to do mm. as you have done Amen. and you are still doing. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus, you not only see the future, you believe in the future. Yes. And therefore you invest in the present. Mm. Lord, help us to see what you see. Help us yeah. to believe what yeah. you believe. Yeah. And then we can invest in the same way you invest. Yes, Father, help us to be in union with you. Yes. To have your vision for your church. To Amen. Have your passion. Your sacrifice, your love for Amen. your church. Amen. Father, we are your co-workers. Help us not to work against you. Yeah. Amen. Father, I pray that you pour out your self-giving love, love in us, Lord. Yes. Yeah. Self-giving love. Your yes, church, Lord. Lord. Amen. Yes. Look deeper into your heart, Lord. You know what you really value, Lord. 
Yes. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. Wow. <coughs> amen. Amen. Fill us with yourself. Like you reminded us this morning. Fill us with yourself. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, we need you, Jesus. We really need you. Mm. Living in Amen. us, Amen. building your church through us. We need to see what you see. We need we need to feel what you feel. We need to have your heart that you can build your church through us. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get in pairs, please, and let's pray one for another that God would lift each of our eyes up from the negative, from the daily struggles, from perhaps years of betrayals and discouragements and negative things and reconnect us with a pure, eternal, beautiful vision of the Lord Jesus for His bride. Let's do that now. Pray for one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's be seated, please. Page uh, 27 in your manual, please. And uh, we've looked at our current perspective of the church, uh, which sadly was a big mixture, wasn't it, as it turned out. And, uh, and think about your assignment was simply to reflect on the words that come to mind when you think about the church. Your assignment was not to think of negative words. It was just simply to think about the current situation. And yet so much of what... Uh, came forth was was quite quite uh, quite dark, uh, sadly, and and I think this is true. Um, this is pretty consistent all, all over the world. Uh, sad to say, and as a result of that, so many leaders are discouraged, burned out, uh, even in despair, even just given up. Uh, there are a very large number of leaders who leave leadership every week. Uh, all over the world who just give up, throw up their hands and say, that's it, that's, I'm, I've, I'm finished. Um, of course, there are some positive things when I encouraged you, hey guys, how about some positive? There were some good things, but it was pretty negative. Then we looked at Jesus' perspective and we said, oh my, it just blew our minds, didn't it? It was like, oh wow, he looks at the same situation that we do. In fact, he sees a whole lot more than we do and he sees life and hope and victory and a future. As a result of that, it so deeply um, uh, determines how he treats the church. He always loves, always believes, always hopes. Wow. Amen. And by his grace, we will too. Let's look now at Paul's vision of the church. And Paul was very deep thinker and writer and practitioner when it came to the church. In Paul's letters, there are three main metaphors. Actually, there are lots of metaphors that uh, he uses. I, I have one book that the author counts more than a hundred metaphors for the church. 
um, I, I think he actually is stretching a lot of them to, to, get, to get to that point. But, but, but there are certainly lots. It's not just these three, but, but I think these are the, the main three, uh, the preeminent three metaphors in Paul's writings for the church. The church as the bride of Christ, the church as the body of Christ, the church as the temple of God. So here's your next team assignment. Uh, I'm going to assign one of these three metaphors to each table. Bride, body, temple, bride, body, temple, bride, body, temple. So take your metaphor and you'll notice there on page 27 there are several scriptures given in your team, just work on your metaphor, yeah? Uh, look at those passages and then think in your team, what are the characteristics? What, is that, what does this metaphor mean? What's, what's Paul expressing? What are the characteristics that you can think of, of the bride of Christ? What's contained in that idea? And then make a list. You can see there are several ideas given uh, in the columns there on your page. We'll give you three to four minutes to do this. Let's do this now, please. And then we'll hear your work. Great. Let's come together, please. Bride. What do you think of? Bride of Christ. What does that mean? What's Paul expressing? Love. This is bride. Yep. Or bridge. Either one. <laughs> Sanctify. Set apart. Yes, yeah? set apart. Sanctify means set apart. Set apart, right? Yes, yeah, set apart to God. Blameless. Blameless. Some of the other groups on bride. Well prepared. Bro? Well prepared. Well prepared. Prepared for the marriage. Yeah, for the union. Good. What else? Bride. Surrender. Surrender to the husband. Wow. Holiness. A sister? Devotion. No, I was saying submission. It's still surrender. Uh, what was that, Mary? Devotion. Devotion. Yeah, devotion. Beautiful. One with Christ. Yeah, intimacy, union, union of life. Wow. The two become one. Extraordinary. You know, God... God, um, one of the reasons why he created husband and wife on the earth was that it would be a reflection of the, it would be a type of the union of Christ and his bride. Wow. It's to point to that. Faithfulness. Faithful bride. Purity. Purity. Yes. Anticipation. Sorry? Anticipation. Anticipation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, excitement, anticipation at the coming union. Uh, fear. I'm sorry? Fear. 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 Okay, healthy, healthy, uh, healthy, um, healthy fear. Respect, respect. We're, we're having a vote for respect here. <laughs> the men say fear, the women say respect. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's great. And anything else on bride? Someone says submission. Submission? Submission. Yep. submission. Sorry? Dutiful. Beautiful. The beauty of the bride. Amen. Of course. This is number one. Yeah. The first thing is wow. Beautiful bride. And, and wasn't that what... Um, Oh, what Adam said when he saw Eve? What was it, Jim? In Hebrew. It was wow, wasn't it? 
It was wow in, 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 in Hebrew. Wow. Wow. I'm going to chuck it up here. Wow. In some cultures, rides are expensive. <laughs> That's because they're so valuable. So precious. Valuable, valuable. Wow, man. And this is, and, 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 this valuable bride who, who Jesus considers so valuable, this is the one you're leading. Mm. This is what you are stewarding. The valuable bride of Christ. This is who you're serving. Wow, so don't be frustrated. Yeah? And upset and sort of hit him and what's the matter with you, bunch of slugs, you know? What about proper jealousy? The proper jealousy. Jealousy that God has for his bride. Amen. Yeah, he is. Similar jealousy. He's jealous for his bride. Jealousy. Yes, good. Good. Joy. Joy. Intense love. Yeah, not just a theoretical love. It's a really consuming love, isn't it? Overwhelming love. That's great. Her garments. Garments are beautiful. Good. Let's move on to body. What do you think of? Body of Christ. What do you, what do you see there? What's, what's Paul telling us? Alive. Living being. Interdependent. Yeah, every member needs the others. Functions. The body functions. The body grows. Nourished. The body is nourished by the Word of God. Unity of the body. One body under the head or moving in the same direction. Sorry? Oneness. Many parts. One body, but many parts. A great variety. Look at the difference. But on one hand, you've got a fingernail. On the other hand, you've got lungs. On the other hand, you've got earlobes, you know? I mean, look at the variety. Amazing, isn't it? So many different parts. But together we're complete. And we need every single one of those parts. What else? Body. Bro? No spot or wrinkle. Every part has a purpose. Every part has a purpose. Every member function. Some bodies are wrinkled. Movement. There's movement in a body. Amen. What else? Body, body. Miriam. Caring. Yeah, the care. Good. The body regenerates. Yeah, the body, yeah, it heals itself, doesn't it? Regenerates and heals. Wow. Collaboration. Collaboration. The parts of the body work together. Beautiful. This is a very healthy, healthy. Oh, that better be one of the first things we think of, yeah? <laughs> After these three days, it will. What doing in the morning is a real picture of how we need to care for the body. Good. Just like what Grant yep. leading us Care, in. fitness, health. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Reproduce. Yeah, bodies create new bodies. Good. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Sorry? Yes. We're moving on. <laughs> Great. Very beautiful image, isn't it? Oh, wow. Under the head. Every part connected to the head. Every part obeys the head. Connected to the head. Yeah, they don't just do what they like and, and happen to be in unity, is it? The reason why they're in unity is because they're all connected to the head. This is core in healthy church. Every member connected to the head. Without that, we're, we're sunk. It's not going to happen. It's just a pile of body parts. Yeah. Great. Let's move on to temple. What do you see in temple? Temple. Serving God. Sacred. Sacred. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. That's what you do in a temple, isn't it? The sacrifice. 
Body grows. Back to body. Grows. Got it. Temple. Worship. This is what we do in the temple. We worship God. Prayer. There's prayer. All the time. Encounter God. This is God. His presence. We think the presence of God. Experience God. Encounter God. Dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. My goodness. God's glory. The fullness of His glory. Cornerstone is the Lord Jesus. Yeah, Ken said the, that we are the host of the presence of God. And, the, and so the, the building of God is the host of the presence of God. Wow. Wow. Amen. The host of the presence of God. It's, it's strong, solid. We see strength in the temple, don't we? It's solid. We see design. Beautiful. Beauty, it's beautiful. Not just a functional structure, is it? But God, uh, Temple of Solomon. Beautiful, magnificent. People came from all over the world to see it. Order. There's order in the temple, isn't there? There's structure, there's order. Um, pillar of truth. Yeah, strength, truth. Holy. Holy place. Many parts, built together. many parts built together. Many different, you know, the furniture in the temple, the different, all the things that go in to make it up. Yes. We are the living stones, aren't we? Yes. It's our lives. Great. Fire resistance. Fire resistance. <laughs> Fireproof. Fireproof. Good. Precious stones. Precious stones. So the, sto so the stones. Yeah, yes. Built with uh, gold and silver. It's built with gold and silver. Yes. Yeah. Not wood, hay, and stubble. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's what you were saying, wasn't it? Yeah, good. <laughs> that's okay, Jebby. You're doing well, bro. <laughs> Extremely important to God. Whoever destroys the temple, what does God do to them? Destroys them. Wow. That, a place of mediation. That's where, that's where heaven and earth meet, isn't it? That's where God and man connect. Wow, reconciliation. So it's a gathering place for believers. Gathering for believers. Gathering place. God is. Resting place. Very specific pattern. There's the design again. The earth is based on the heavenly. Based on the heavenly. That's Good. true of the Temple of Solomon and the Tabernacle of Moses, and I think it must be true of the Church of God. Amen. Based on the heavenly. Yeah, it's not just, hey guys, you know, do what you like. God has design. Great. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you very much to our, our two scribes here. So Paul's vision of the church. These are amazing images. When you think of the church, think of bride, body, temple. Look at the life that is there. All of these beautiful words and in, uh, in Appendix 1, don't look at it, but I'll just point it out to you. Um, there are just longer lists of, of words, and I, I think we need to grab some of these and add. These are just lovely, lovely expressions. What are your thoughts as you look at these three lists of words? See, when, when you say Paul, Paul, church, what do you think? That's what he thinks. What do you see in that? <clears throat> Sorry? He knew God's heart. Yeah, good. Diversity, yeah. What are your thoughts? Compare this with how we usually think about church. 
Very deep is life, privilege, the nature. Wow. This is why Paul endured persecution. This is why he and the other uh, apostles and leaders of the early church were willing to give their lives. They gave everything for the church because that's what they saw. They weren't willing to die for a collection of programs on Sunday morning. Yeah? That's what they saw. They saw the dwelling place of God. They saw the beauty of the bride of Christ. They saw the power of the body of Christ functioning well. See, this is the spiritual reality of the church. Look, please, on page uh, 28. And these three metaphors are beautiful. And we want to hold all three in our thinking. And when we have all three, it's such a big and robust image of God's vision for the church. And look at this box at the top of page 28 there. In Paul's mind, when he thinks about the church, he thinks about a bride, a body, a temple. Very broad perspective. He does not just think of a Sunday morning meeting with a collection of programs that we need to keep running that hopefully will attract people so that they will then give and we can meet the budget. <laughs> he doesn't think about that at all. He never even mentions any of that. What he sees is the nature of the church, the meaning of the church, the spiritual reality of the church. Do you understand? See, if we think of the church as just this collection of mechanical programs that we have to keep running, we are going to burn out pretty quickly. We're going to be upset. We're going to be frustrated. We're going to be very tired. Yeah. And so Paul wants us to deeply understand the spiritual reality of the church. This is the spiritual reality of the church. This is how we must think about the church. God thinks about the church this way. These are His images. The church is a bride. The church is a body. The church is a temple. Something else uh, here on these three metaphors is please hold to all three. Don't just pick one over the other. Uh, and of course, of these three, which is the one that Paul speaks of the most? Body. body. Yeah, by far, actually. And, and, and so we will do a lot of work on, on this one in, 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 uh, over these days. But keep the other two very much in our thinking. Um, and in Appendix 2, have a quick look at Appendix 2. This is on page 149. It's one reason why the, the book is so big. A quarter of this book is appendices. So have a quick look at Appendix 2 on page 149. And this is the dark side of the three metaphors. And uh, this is quite interesting. And by dark side, I mean that if all you have is one, and if you go too extreme on that one, there will be a dark side. So you see there, for example, the dark side of the bride, what is it? It's emotionalism, yeah? Um, and and there, are, there are groups that emphasize bride, bride, bride. It's nothing but bride. And, and they're often characterized by emotionalism. But notice how the bride is, how that that potential for imbalance is countered by the body, the maturity of the body, yeah? So we're not just being uh, immature and driven about by our emotions. And is also countered by the building and the strength of the temple. Do you understand? 
So it's, it's really cool as we keep all three of these metaphors in our thinking at the same time. The dark side of the body. You know, have you met, have you met churches who emphasized, we're organic, man. <laughs> we're just organic, meaning we have no real strategy, no real purpose. We just sort of hang out and, you know, keep it real and do whatever sort of, you know, pops into our heads. I've never done that. Sometimes we call it spirit. Uh, we live by the spirit, so we know just... It's, it's, just, it's just chaos, isn't it? Yeah. And, and this is the dark side of being organic. <laughs> Sloppy, undisciplined, chaotic. And notice how this is countered by the focus and the passion of the bride. So that keeps us focused. We're not just drifting here and there, whatever enters our head. And it's also countered by the structure and the order and the discipline. The solidity of the temple. Yeah, cool? Yeah. Dark side of the temple, what's that? If we only think of the church as a temple, where do we end up? <coughs> yeah, legalism, rigidity, yeah, just formalism. And this is beautifully countered by the passion of the bride. Yeah? So we're not just sliding in it. We just do this and do this and do this because that's the way we've always done it because that's what we're supposed to do. But there's passion, there's life and the continual growth and the continual change of the body. The body is constantly changing. Think about that. It's not just stuck in one thing, in one form. It's constantly changing and adapting. Yeah? Beautiful, huh? So here is this, uh, uh, to me, this is such a, a magnificent vision of Paul that these three metaphors catch comments please questions thoughts might another dark side of focus on the bride be a sort of um, a preoccupation with the future. Wow. With eternity and uh, that's great. engagement with the reality mm. here. That's great. Yeah. yeah, excellent insight. Yeah. And that will be countered by? Um, I would say probably the body. Yep. About, um, alive, we have to relate, we have to live here. Yep, here we are today, yep. doing things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the bride supposed to be? What's the bride supposed to be doing now in preparation for the future? Good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Great. More thoughts? Mercy. I have a question. Can the temple be considered a resting place? And if so, how? Uh, like one of the characteristics of the temple. A resting place. A resting place for the presence of God? And if so, how? Um, uh, what do you think? What do you think about that? Mercy's question is, could we have resting place as one of the characteristics of the temple? And if so, how? What's the connection? Paddy? Paddy, Paddy, Paddy? Yes? No? Yes? No? <laughs> it's not a physical rest, but you rest in God. Yeah, we rest in God, don't we? Yeah. You don't physically rest there. Yeah, yeah. And, and also... You know, uh, we could also think about like the journey of the tabernacle in the uh, Old Testament and how remember when the uh, ark was taken away and then had to journey back and, you know, and so forth. And, and then it comes and then there's the Temple of Solomon and that's where God is going to stay. Um, and so here is the church. This is like his final eternal resting place, isn't it? We are. Yeah. Dear friends, yeah. think about yeah. that. This is not a temporary temple. Mm. You know, this is not temple for now, like the Tabernacle of Moses or Temple of Solomon. It was for that season. Mm. This is the eternal one, the final one. Wow, that's what you're building. Yeah, that's right. 
That's what you're doing as a church leader, as serving church leaders so that they can build well. The final resting place of God, the creator of the infinite, the creator of the heavens. Whoa, this is what we're doing. Psalm 84. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Amen. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow has found a house, and the swallow has a nest. Wow. Rest, where she may lay her young, even thine altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They shall still be praising thee. Amen. I think that's an idea. We're going to do that. The house of God should be a place of comfort and rest. Yeah. For the people. Can, can you read that, that again, Jim, where uh, my soul cries out? Uh, that, that, that bit. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. All right, let's everybody stand. My soul longs, even faints. Come on, let's all tell that to God right now. Let's cry out that He establish <clears throat> His bride, His body, His temple in our nations. We cry out for that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is our desire. Lord, it's not just for successful churches or, or churches that are recognized or churches that are that are big and famous. Lord, that's not what we cry out for. We cry out for you. We cry out for your presence. We cry out for your resting place in your people. That's our desire. That's our vision. Lord, not just for a bunch of programs on this and that. Lord Jesus, lift our eyes up. Don't let us settle for such a low, crummy vision of the church. But consume our hearts with passion for you, for your bride to be prepared, for your body to grow to maturity, for your temple to be built, that the fullness of your glory and your purposes would be fulfilled in your people. Father, let it be. And let everything that we do in our lives and in our ministries be directed ultimately to this purpose. Lord, don't let us settle for anything less. Help us, Lord, and forgive us, Lord, where we have settled, where we've allowed ourselves to be distracted and overcome by agendas and vision and purposes that are so far less than what is your vision. Help us, Lord Jesus, by the power of your spirit, by the power of your spirit and use us as your instruments to turn the hearts of many leaders in our nations back to the simplicity of Christ, back to the purity of His vision, His ultimate vision for His church. Use us, Lord, to turn your people back to you, to the beauty, to the centrality of your bride. Amen. 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 Please be seated. This is the vision of the Lord Jesus to build His bride, to prepare His bride, to raise up His body, to build His temple. This was Paul's vision. This was why he was willing to suffer. Even in the end, of course, gave his life completely, gave everything, gave everything. Who's going to give everything for a collection of programs? Who's going to give everything for numbers? You know, trying to have big numbers. Who's going to give everything for that? That my numbers are bigger than yours. 
Oh, wow. This is the vision that must burn in our hearts. And as we serve leaders in our countries, let's serve them with passion, with zeal for this vision. Yeah? In each of these three images, metaphors, we see the people, the process, and the purpose. It's quite interesting, and this helps us to a little more deeply understand each of these images. So first we have the people. We have the people that make up the bride, that make up the body, that make up the temple. And this is all true believers are, are in this. And, and, and this is an expression of God's ultimate purpose, is that together with all the saints that we would experience. Remember the prayer we prayed this morning. Together with all the saints, we would experience the length, breadth, depth, height of the love of Christ. The people, that's his vision. And Jesus is returning for one bride. He does not have multiple brides. He's not a, what's the word? Polygamist. He's not a polygamist. You know, it's not like I'm his bride, you're his bride, you know, we're all his bride. <laughs> That'd be a lot of brides, man. That'd be expensive, wouldn't it? <laughs> He's got one unified bride. Same for body. He's got one body, just one. It's, it's our lives knitted together in Christ. So we see there the corporate nature of spiritual maturity. Dear friends, um, the, the Western gospel is so individualized where Christianity is a relationship. It's a deal between you and God. Lord, I will give you my repentance and faith. In return, you give me eternal life. And now I'm going to grow in you and I'm going to be everything you've called me to be and fulfill every vision you've given. You know, it's all me, me, me. It's all about God and me. Yeah. You know, the expression they love to have me and God. That's a majority. If you want to get the glare from me, say that in my presence. <laughs> It's horrible. Yeah. Me and God is... I mean, of course, it's certainly true if it, if it is, does end up that you're taken away or something and you're only by yourself. But that is not a healthy way of thinking about the Christian life. It's us, dear friends. It's only together that we experience Him in His maturity, uh, in, 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 in His fullness. It's only together. Uh, and, and so we have to quit being discouraged about the church and therefore withdrawing. Yeah? Not that anybody here has ever been tempted by that. <laughs> We're all looking very innocent. <laughs> That's what happens, isn't it? We, we get beat up, we get rejected, we're, you know, really, really broken and beat up. And, and so we want to withdraw. Well, I'm still walking with God and this sort of thing. No, you're, you're really, you're broken. And, and you will not come to maturity just by yourself. It is a corporate experience. Secondly, we see the process. Each of these three images, they're under construction, aren't they? The bride is being prepared. Yeah, she's preparing herself for the coming of the bride. The body is growing to maturity. And, and what's the definition of maturity in Ephesians 4, according to the body? <coughs> the fullness of Christ. Yeah? Ah, oh, wow! And the temple is being built. We, our lives, are being built together. So we see the corporate people of God in the process of being prepared for the ultimate purpose of God. And in all three of these images, the ultimate purpose is the same. It, they're very different images, but it's the same purpose. Union with Christ for all of eternity. Yeah? The bride. They too will be one. Amen? That's the purpose of the bride. Uh, the, uh, the body. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The temple filled with the presence of God. The dwelling place of God for all eternity. Wow. Is that cool? That's the purpose. This is the vision of the body of Christ. This is the vision of the church. God's vision of the church. And this, dear brother, dear sister, must be the work of every Christian leader. And this is our calling as those who serve leaders 
is to help them to regain not only their first love for God, but their first love for the church. Yeah? And that the church building this beautiful bride, body, temple, will be their core purpose. Not using the bride for themselves, but serving the bride. Not understanding the bride as being just a job for them and a source of income, so we'd better keep the people coming, so we need to have cool programs to attract them. Oh my goodness. Let's lift their eyes high to the vision of God, to the purpose of God. Amen. Amen. Down at the bottom of page 29, see the passage there. That even though, of course, it is God's work, He's the one preparing the bride, maturing the body, building the temple. We are his fellow workers. Wow. You are God's building. You are God's temple. But we're his co-workers. The leaders are the co-workers of God in this amazing work of preparing his bride, building his temple, maturing his bride. Next piece, please. Uh, peace, please, please, peace. Page 31. Let's reflect about what the church is and what the church is not. This is your next team assignment. We'll just give you three minutes. In view of all of that, <coughs> now let's think. Let's challenge ourselves in how we think about the church, what we've done in leading churches. What actually is the church and what is the church not? Let's challenge ourselves. Please make two lists. I've given you several uh, examples there to get you going. Team assignment, three minutes, and then we'll hear your thoughts. What is the church and what is the church not? Let's hear your thoughts, please. Let's hear your work. Either one, say the church is or the church is not. Just Let's just have uh, anything, please. Give us one statement, either is or is not. <coughs> Church is an organism. Church is not an organization. It has organization because organisms have organization. Yeah, they're organized, but it's not an organization. It's a living thing. Yeah, it's an organism. Good. What else? Life center, not an event center. It's a lot. Oh, that's beautiful. The church is a life center. The church is not an event center. And of course, though, life will have events, but it's not just an event center. Good. That's not its primary thing. Yeah. The church is not a place for enter entertainment, but a place of worship. The church is a place of worship. Yeah. The church is not a place of entertainment. Church is a place where you're hurting me. In the same thing, it is a place of participation and not a place of watching a performance. Aha. Participation. Somebody pray for Brent and raise him from the dead, please. He's suffering. Church is a place where God is being glorified, not a man being glorified. Wow. Is God is being glorified, not man being glorified? Do it, Lord. That's a paradigm shift, isn't it? Yeah, performance. Sorry? It's the reflection of the person of God. Yep. Refl the church is a reflection of God. The church is not a reflection of some man. Amen. Celebrity. Church is not celebrity. Not skeptics, soul refreshers. Soul refreshers. So those who refresh souls. Wow, okay. House of prayer, not a temple to visit. Yeah, like a religious thing. Yes. Not a shrine, not a shrine. It's a place for Christians to serve, not to be served. It's a place for Christians to serve. It is not a place for Christians to be served. Good. Tootie. It's not a place for Christians to be served. 
It's not. Church is not a social center. Church is the union between God and His people. Amen. Delphine. <laughs> not an ATM machine. The church is not an ATM machine. Now we're really getting tough. Whoa. We came up with it is not, but we're not sure what the is is. It is not a place of ritual and tradition. It's not a place of ritual and tradition. It's a place of worship and in spirit and in truth. Amen. Authentic relationships. Yeah, rather than just, just a mere ritual and tradition. Yeah. Good. Active, not passive. Absolutely. The church is active. The church is not passive. Where we just passively sit and watch a performance. Yes. Church is not a charity. And of course it may have a charitable arm. That's, that's very appropriate in, in some context, but that's not the essence of what the church is. It's not just that. It's not primarily that. Church is not a place. It's people. Church is not a place. The church yes. is people. A people. It's God's people. Yeah. Amen. The church is priceless. Priceless. You cannot priceless. Like, uh, like, uh, it cannot be bought. The, the, it can be said this church is worth the amount yeah. of money. Oh, wow. The church is not worth that. It's more than yeah. that. It's not bought by the blood Priceless. Of the priceless. Amen. man. Yeah. yeah. Can't, cannot be purchased. <coughs> Amanda. The church is not a charity, but the church, of course, will exercise charity. The church is faith and not self-effort. The church is faith, faith. Yeah, not self-effort. Self-effort, yeah, faith in God rather than trust in ourselves and our own self-effort. Good. It's a family where children are raised to maturity. It's a family where children are raised to maturity. Yeah, the spiritual children. Amen, all of us. So what is the is not on that? Another place to drop your kids off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do it for us. I'm glad to see you were able to come back from the dead, bro. Resurrection. Excellent. It's the old Brent. Forgiveness of sin, not perfect righteous people. Yeah. Bro? It's a place where people get healed. Ah, sure, sure. Healing, yeah. Good, great. It's not a resort. It's a home and refuge, not a business and workplace. It's not a business, not a workplace. It's a refuge, it's a home. Beautiful. Beautiful thoughts. Wow, thank you. As you look at these two lists, what are your thoughts as you think about the churches we serve in our, each in our own countries? What are your thoughts? I've taken this picture for everybody. Wow. <laughs> Just send it. <laughs> Yeah, we're popping them up on WhatsApp, yeah. Yeah, we have a WhatsApp group for our time together. If any of the new people today want to join, give your uh, WhatsApp to Joshua and he'll, he'll add you in. My thought is in general that the church can get used for a lot of wrong purposes. It could be doing a lot of those things. Yeah. And people can lead it. Yeah. It's not that everything on this list is necessarily, you know, forbidden for, from a church ever being involved in this. Um, but, but this is not the essence of it. It's not the essence of the church. It may be something that the church does. 
that's appropriate in the context. But this is the essence of it. Building up, not tearing down. Amen. Amen. See, how we view the church is going to directly result in what we do to build that church, isn't it? So if we view the church as a place of entertainment or as an event center, how will we understand what's our role in building such a church? What will we do to build it? Plan events. Plan events. Invest, in the best equipment. Invest in the best equipment. Get your smoke machine. Get your, get your lights. You know, it's fascinating to me to watch. Uh, there are so many different church planning strategies. And, and some of them in the West, I mean, in order to plan a church, you've got to start out with a huge amount of money. Why? Because you have to buy light, sound equipment, smoke machine, right? It's, it's amazing. Like, that's your strategy. And, and, and that's because you're, you're seeing that that's what the church is. But if the church is a place to serve, is serve, life, worship, Active, spirit in truth, forgiveness, presence of God. Now what will you do? You're going to focus on people. Not so much on staff and building. Uh, one big one we didn't put here, church is not a building. Sorry? Oh, it's up there already. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, how much, you know, when people, if people think church is a building, then everything goes into the building, doesn't it? It's all about money every week. It's, we're going to need more money. You know, it's the building. Everything just revolves around the silly building. But when we understand the church as being the lives of the people of God, knitted together, growing to maturity in Christ in the presence of God by the truth of God. Oh, wow. Then what we will do to build such a church, completely different. Let's stand, please. <coughs> In a moment, we'll uh, finish the morning with prayer in our teams. And then we'll head to lunch. Lunches are awesome. Aren't the, aren't the meals awesome here? Before we do that, sorry to get your thoughts on food just then. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> Before we do that, let's reflect upon what we did this morning. What did we do this morning? What did we look at and why? What do we just do? <coughs> Change. Perspective. Change perspective. God's vision, for his church. God's vision for his church. What church meant for Jesus. What church meant for the Lord Jesus. <laughs> face reality. Yeah, we faced reality, didn't we? The current yes. reality. Living from the field to the stand. We went up in the stand. To understand what Jesus meant, I will build my church. And the centrality of the church in everything that God has ever done from the beginning of time. It's not just a new idea. Now Paul says it was a mystery, but it was there. He just hadn't revealed it in the fullness, you know, Jew and Gentile coming together as the people of God. But this is God's eternal purpose. What else did we do? Understanding the true spir the, the spiritual nature of the church and make that really clear in our own heart. The spiritual nature of the church. Good. What else? Comparison. Comparison. We've got several comparisons yep. that yep. set our ideas in, in 
in contrast to God's idea. Yeah. Why? And why did we do that? To set us free from the bondage of yes. wrong views of Well, God. amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Developing the eyes of faith. The amen. Of amen. Amen. Eyes of, faith. eyes of faith. In the midst of the current reality. Yes. 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 We're not denying reality. But the eyes of faith in the midst of that. What else? Looking at the church from Jesus' perspective. The metaphors to help us deeply understand the spiritual nature, the spiritual reality that the church is. See, those are not just nice little poetic metaphors for us to, you know, sing songs about or something or feel nice about. That is, that is the meaning of the church. That is the reality of the church. Bride, body, temple. We look at deep subjects with simple words. Deep, practical implications. deep subjects, simple words, practical implications. We looked at truth together. At we dived in together, together, didn't we? Together. Yeah, yeah, we did it together. It wasn't we, an academic exercise. You kept bringing us back to God and responding to the different mm -hmm. truths. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, a lot of interaction with God, wasn't there? Yes. Bringing our hearts before God, bringing our brokenness before God, bringing our pain before God, yeah? Yes. Repenting before God of having thought so little or being so upset. Yeah, just two sessions give us a deep insight that don't play church, build the church. Amen, yes. amen. Yeah. Don't play church, build the church. Yes. Amen. I think uh, we are... Uh, yeah, the pattern. The pattern. Amen. 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 See, after lunch, we're then going to dive into the model of healthy church. Beautiful model. But we didn't do that this morning. Instead, we did this. Why? Many wrong things to get rid of. Why else? Create a yearning. Create a yearning. Yeah. Create a vision. Create a desire. Yeah. See, see, as you're working with leaders, if you just dive in, hey guys, really cool model of uh, church. Dive into the guts of the model. What's going to happen? It's just going to be intellectual. There's going to be discouragement because they're going to compare that with the current reality. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to say, and well, it, what it, are you going to teach on these things that are the church, <laughs> which are not the church? <coughs> they're waiting for well, you to talk yeah, about the things the church is very different. that are not appropriate. Yeah, yeah the thinking is very different, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't know why it's important. Why is it even important? What does it matter? So we establish eternal purpose of God, vision of God around with everything else revolves. I think, I think what you also Surgery was carried out in our mind. Surgery. We Lovely. Surgery. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Also, also alignment with Jesus. Alignment with what Jesus. He yeah. What he means. Yeah. You know, leave where we are to where he is. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Nice. Yes. Miriam. Mindset yes. 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 Yep. Yes. Yes. And now we're going to drill down into what that new perspective is. How does that mean? And how do we build such a church? Who's interested in figuring that out? How do we build the bride, the body, the temple? Wow, what does that mean practically? What does that mean? How on earth can we do such a thing? The, spir the spiritual reality, what we just looked at? How on earth can we do that? Actually, it's not rocket science. Yeah. <laughs> well, my expectation would not be caught up. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing we did, we cried for the church of our nation. Yes, yes. amen. Amen. into that re reality, spiritual reality. Amen. We have a burden. And yeah. vision for the, for, yes. For the church, the yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and please remember this when, when, you're, when you're training leaders, don't just go into the, the stuff, you know, the yeah. details of the, the models and the principles and the ideas. 
or, or else it just becomes another another program you know just another model we've already got a bunch of models here's another one it's a little different fine um, first speak to the people's hearts Amen. draw out the vision fan the flame of the vision then they want to learn they want to know they want to change they want to do it differently very important when you're training nurture vision and then people will draw, will pull out the model from you. They'll want to know, they'll want to learn. You know, one thing you said, it's one bride. And then what I think is, you know, when we are doing ministry, it's not ABC ministries or like XYZ ministries. It's God's ministry. Yeah. Amen. But many times, it's mine, it's mine. Yeah. You know, but today, I mean, I could feel it. Ultimately, it's God's. And how many of we realize we are not doing it to establish our kingdom, our ministry. Amen. It's God. So it's Amen. one body, yes. one Christ, one bride. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. At our tables, let's please pray. Let's commit um, uh, the work of the morning to Him. Commit our hearts to Him. Commit these days to Him for His highest, for the changing of our nations.